Why, hello there! The title is probably given this away, but tonight we're reviewing Guardian builds. First up, the traditional tanker. So, before we begin, let me clarify that at the time of making this video, taunts are in a weird place. Uh, some mobs have inherent taunt resistances and bosses have taunt immunity. This seems to have been intended by the flagship team, so it's not guaranteed that it will change in 2038. There may be alternative aggro generation and maintenance approaches, there may be taunt revamps, but at the moment it is what it is. Therefore, there's two variations of tankers, those who use taunts and those who don't. So let's begin with the ones who don't. A tanker slash healer has two main objectives, number one, staying alive, and number two, keeping others alive. Thus, the first priority is to bump survivability. In that front, Guardians have some timeless assets at their disposal, namely, auras. So, one point in Aura of Power unlocks Aura Stability, though it can also be used actively if one wishes. Aura Stability is then maxed for maximum benefit. With the ability to use more than one Aura at a time, Aura of Renewal and Aura of Defense become a match made in Heaven. HP regeneration that scales to one's max HP, and an armor bonus that benefits from being surrounded. This is truly the core of a defender. Aura of Deflection can also be used in encounters that require it, so an honorable mention there. Now, while we're on the subject of auras, a maxed grand aura is also a useful asset, as it benefits both the auras and the prayers one may have. And speaking of prayers, there's a prayer that one should absolutely never skip, prayer of healing. Maxed for the lowest possible cooldown, this skill inserts healing capabilities into what would otherwise just be an impregnable walking suit of armor, especially without taunts. Uh, while we're on this tree, grabbing great defender may not be a bad option at all. This can be skipped, but I find the point investment to be worth the team support panic button one gets. Lastly, we move to the shield skills. I'm aware that this may be odd for newer players, but shield skills are actually fairly underwhelming for Guardians, as they don't provide much of a direct boost to the two objectives of staying alive and keeping others alive. Still, there is a few gems here that one may grab. So, two points in Shield of Faith provide a panic button for when one needs shields while they also unlock Shield Wall, which pretty much does the same, but two panic buttons are better than one. While in this tab, one may also grab and max spiritual strength, if one can afford it. At best, it's free attribute points to cover feeds, and at worst, it's 400 extra HP. And since Aura of Renewal scales to one's max HP, the synergy with one's core is obvious. Another honorable mention here is Stampede, as it provides a handy mobility option. The points seem to get to it is rather steep for my tastes though, so I'd suggest getting it through such gear as Archangel Gliders. Speaking of gear, honorable mentions include Archangel Gliders, Souls Invictus, and Warrior Belt, for their free skill points, Keeper of the North Star for its stellar, unique plus one to all skills, Measurous Gift for its massive plus four to Aura of Renewal, and any Surge Caster type firearms for providing a viable means of basic PvE farming. Now on to Taunts. If one only uses Keeper of the North Star and the Helmet with plus one to all skills, the previous build should still have six remaining skill points, which unfortunately don't suffice to also get taunts, namely Challenge and Denounce. Of course, gear and rings with more skill points can provide the missing points, but this would introduce more gear dependency. So instead of sacrificing versatility, let's see what a taunt core looks like and what can be sacrificed for it. So assuming one has a total of plus two to all skills, 18 skill points would need to be invested into a taunt core. Two points in challenge unlock provoke, which buffs challenges taunt strength, then eight points max provoke, then eight points max denounce, as its taunt strength is not reliant on heavenly condemnation. Of course, one could boost challenge for increased duration and max heavenly condemnation for the armor debuff, but I'd argue that 18 points still get the job done, if the objective is just to taunt reliably. So in this scenario, 12 more points would be required. To get those, one could safely sacrifice spiritual strength, as long as their feeds allow it, yielding 6 more points. Conversely, one can invest 1 point in it as it becomes 3 through the plus 2 to all skills, and cut down on prayer of healing and or skip great defender. While missing a whole skill, having a longer cooldown on prayer of healing may not be ideal. This should suffice to get tons without sacrificing much of the skill core that's geared towards survivability. Of course, one can also just use gear that covers these points, such as the pieces mentioned before and RJ Donald's Diplomat, Goldie's Tactic, the Sovereign's Mace, and so forth. 
Some of those options may limit one's gameplay options, such as using various, often suboptimal guns or swords instead of a surge caster, but they're all options one may consider. So that wraps up the traditional tanker build. Of course, one can always modify it to better suit their tastes and according to their gear choices. With that said, thank you for watching.